Hey yo guys, Jams Minimods here, and in today's video, voted by you guys, I'm going to be converting up a Mortifactor's Space Marine. Now as you can probably see on the screen right now, I put up a poll for this absolutely ages ago, and just haven't had time to get around to it. So, you will also see that Blood Ravens and Mortifactors are actually tied for the vote, so you can probably guess what one of my next videos is going to be. Now I didn't actually really know that much about Mortifactors apart from the aesthetics, you know, they kind of venerate their dead if that's kind of the right way to put it. You know, they'll take their fallen bat battle brothers, skeletons and bones and they'll line their battle cruisers and their ships with it. And generally their aspirants and where the marines originally come from is a planet that's full of tribes of, well, cannibalistic tribes. So once again, we've got that cannibalism, you got bones, you've got the honoring the dead kind of vibe. I think this would actually be a really really cool chapter to do an entire army just like guys just dripping in bone and tanks with like almost cathedrally looking things. I think it would look really really cool. Now while I was researching into these guys one thing I did find out is when you're a fresh newly recruited marine they're actually known as the faceless because you actually have to wait until you get your first kill and use their skull as like a, a mask, I guess. I don't know, you turn it into a helmet or something along those lines. Like I said, I'm not really an expert on these guys, but obviously if you want skull helmets, the first place we got to go is the Reavers kit. So I just picked one of them bad boys. I built up the pose that I wanted and just stuck their head in there. Nice and simple. Perfect for this chapter. Now, as always, I will be sticking a Death Watch shoulder pad on this guy because I use all my conversions in my Death Watch army so I can play them all together. But their chapter logo is just a skull, so we'll be just using a transfer for that for later when I actually paint it. Now, obviously, going by the lore and by some of the artwork that I've found, you're going to kind of expect a lot of bones and skulls and stuff like that. But in this one particular piece of artwork I found and I don't know who the artist is or anything like that so I do apologize for not linking that but I like the fact that the belt buckle was a skull so what I'm going to do here is I just got a skull from the Citadel skull pack and I'm going to use my clippers to just cut the back of the head off just kind of keeping the face area but I'll also be cutting the kind of weird buttony thing on the marine's belt buckle there so then the skull can sit flush and as easy as that, we've got a little scully gothic belt buckle. And then another really cool inspiration I had from some of the artwork was on this piece where he's kind of got like half jaw bones around his neck collar area. I just thought that was really, really cool. So I got one of the orc jaw bones out of the, once again, the Citadel skull pack. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to slice that perfectly down the middle. I just cleaned down the kind of edges where I cut it with my hobby knife and I just glued them down on either side of his like once again the armor neck ring plate thing. I never know what these things are called. Now I think this is a really really nice touch that makes this model pop. Maybe not the best pose for this exactly because he's looking kind of past the skulls but yeah I think it really changes up the silhouette and I like it. Now, it wouldn't be a conversion video by me if I didn't get green stuff out at some point. Now, I'm just going to go 50-50 with the yellow and blue here. Nothing fancy. Mix it up until it goes green, like it says on the tin. As always, making sure to keep your hands and your surface and your tools wet at all times so the green stuff doesn't stick to you or anything you're using. Now that I've got my green stuff ball, I'm just going to get any sort of rounded tool. In this case, I'm using an old hobby knife. And I'm just going to pin it out and I don't want to go too thin here. You just want to keep a nice bit of structure there. But you want to get it nice and flat because we're going to make a little bit of a loincloth here. Now this actually took me quite a few goes. I think it's because at the time it's been a while since I've used green stuff. And I just wasn't really feeling it. Now once I kind of cut the green stuff down to the size and shape that I wanted. Got it in place. I used a little bit of super glue on this one actually because it just wasn't really sticking down enough. Then all I did at this point was I just used my tweezers just to start pulling and tugging away at the green stuff to give that loincloth kind of a tattered, broken look. And you can also pull and stretch pieces if you need to. 
I also did use my hobby knife to kind of puncture some holes in there so it looks, once again, tattered and old. Now, obviously with the nature of this chapter, I don't actually know if this would be like a fabric loincloth or if it's actually some skin or what it is, but when I come to painting it up, then I'll make the choice at that point. Now, doing something kind of similar for the shoulder pad, I cut some green stuff in almost like a V shape, so it manages to kind of wrap around the rounded pauldron. And then I go about it exactly the same way as I did the loincloth. I stick it on there, you know, tatter, tatter up the edges, you know, using my like wet toothpick to get things into the place without kind of damaging the green stuff. I do also use the toothpick to kind of press in and get some folds into the cloth as well. So it gives it a bit more texture, makes it look a little bit more realistic. You know, just going from the edges and then going halfway into the middle of the green stuff, if that makes any sense. Just try and think of like what a folded bit of crumple up cloth might look like. Now next up, I wanted to get some skulls on the backpack. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to trim away one of the kind of pegs that poke out of the top of the backpack, just so the skulls can sit a bit more flat on there. And then I'm just going to glue two skulls on there. Obviously, if you wanted to do something like this, you can go as crazy as you want. Now, as always, I don't like to just stick skulls and stuff on there without having something looking like it's holding it in. Like maybe get some straps in there or some metal bar so it looks like it's pinned into the arm or something like that. Now, I found these plastic earring kind of things that you get and you can get like a hundred or something like that for really, really cheap. And they are these tiny little plastic rods. And I thought it would be quite cool to try and use them for some hobby stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off the tips of these and I'm just going to glue them to the top of the skull. So like I said, it looks like they've been skewered on there onto the arm and I think it works out quite well. Now for this next part, I thought maybe the model is slightly top heavy. So I want to add some bones or something on the leg. Now I got these little bone things out of the Flesh Eater Quartz Ghouls kit and they were too big on their own for the leg. So I tried to cut them in half, but... As you can see on the screen right now, yeah, it didn't qu quite look right, so I kind of scrapped this entire idea. Yeah, definitely don't do that. Now the last thing I kind of do is I stick on my bags and pistol holsters and all the standard intercessor stuff, and I found this one intercessor trinket that has kind of crossed bones in it and stuff like that, which I thought obviously was really fitting, and I needed something a little bit more in the back there, so I just glued that on, and yeah, that's pretty much the model done. Really super, super easy. I know I haven't gone too in-depth in the how I went about the green stuff and that, but I've done it so many times in a million videos. So I kind of breeze past it, but let me know if you prefer me to just to go in-depth with every single video that I do. But yeah, with that said, let's cut to a proper little showcase of this miniature. And there we have him, ladies and gents, in all his bony boy emo glory. Like I said before, I really, really like the aesthetics of this chapter. I think it could make a really, really cool looking army with not much work. Like I said, you just got to stick some bones on there and you got something cool. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments below, what you think of this guy. Maybe give me a name for him or something like that. That'll be really cool. And as always, I just really appreciate you actually watching the video this far. But if you do fancy supporting the channel in any other way, shape or form, I do also have a YouTube membership, Patreon, you know, all that kind of good stuff, you know, merch and all of that. And speaking of which, I've got to give a bit of a shout out to my patrons here, as I always do. So first up, we've got Irish Rock 1987, Primus, Brother Loken and Tic Tac Doe. So yeah, as always, a super special thank you to you guys for always putting in that extra little bit of support for the channel. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, if you haven't actually subscribed yet, definitely do so if you like this sort of content because I release hobby videos like this as often as I can these days. Like I said before, there's definitely a Blood Ravens video coming out soon. Almost said Blood Angels then. So yeah, stay tuned for that, guys. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.